by critical energy infrastructure, we typically mean nuclear, which we're not concerned with here, um, but also oil, natural gas, and electricity, uh, both production and transmission facilities. So that's everything from pumping stations to pipelines and uh, electrical wires. Critical energy infrastructure is often located at central nodes of distribution, and so an interruption of the critical energy infrastructure delivery systems could have a very big impact, not on just the local area, but also on the surrounding countries and the people that need the access to that energy. Critical energy infrastructure is a target for terrorist groups. Uh, we have everything from a call for major attacks uh, from an Al-Qaeda spokesman, al-Zawahiri, in 2005 that was aired on Al Jazeera, calling for attacks on uh, major oil facilities in the Middle East. And also, of course, there was a 2006 attack on Abqaiq, which is the largest oil producing facility in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Unfortunately, not successful. And most recently, we have, of course, the attack in, uh, at a gas facility near Inaminas in Algeria, in which there was a heavy loss of life. Since uh, the 1990s, much of the critical energy infrastructure and the delivery systems that have been organized have gone from what one would call an analog or a hands on distribution and control system to much of it is automated. Someone can tap into your control systems and they could do something as simple as stop the energy production and it could also cause uh, some consequences in the overall facilities. This is a good practices guide and the intention is to provide some very practical information and also some good practices that have been collected from uh, lessons learned by governments, by um, international organizations, and also by private sector companies. All of these people have a stake, and we worked in uh, this t together collaboratively. And I really like to emphasize the word collaboratively, which is the difference of where we actually sat down at the very beginning of the project and we said, what are the chapters and how should we focus on this so that it has some value to uh, other participating states, because everybody wants to see that there's a value and outcome that comes from this. The guide was actually the result of a 2010 uh, OSCE C Critical Energy Infrastructure Protection Workshop that we sponsored, and a number of good suggestions came from that. One of them was that we needed better awareness raising, we needed to um, be able to share best practices, and make people more aware of the actual threat of terrorist attacks and uh, cyber threats in particular seem to be a gap in the literature. What we'd like to see in the next steps is that uh, we build upon this concept of public-private partnerships and that means both public to public and private to private and one good example of this is uh, since the guide was even announced we've had uh, two invitations for people from the OSCE to participate in the oil and gas industry meetings that discuss really the hands-on work of protecting critical infrastructure and it's been very exciting for us to both take our political p commitment and then translate it into some people that are actually working out in the oil and gas and energy sectors themselves.